Hi. Hey, uh, I figured today I'd make a Jacob's letter. I have a Jacob's letter from uh, JK. And this, this one, we'll see how it goes. The kit comes with everything that you need. It has a little booklet, how to wire everything together, and also bits and pieces of how it works. The PCB itself is just a little bit uh, different from how you'll actually wire up the thing, but they've got the any things that they've fixed, they've put that into this document itself. Uh, there's other bits and pieces that you'll need, like you'll need even a drill to make a hole through the case. Uh, so far, as, as from what I've seen in the booklet, and you also need to buy a 12 volt battery, preferably like a, a good car battery. I'm not sure how much current it'll draw uh, or peak current, so I'm not sure there. Uh, I'll find that out later. And it needs a 12 volt automotive ignition coil, which is this one here. They recommend a Commodore, Holden Commodore ignition coil which is this which is about 50 50 to 60 dollars depending on shipping and stuff of course i'm not sure how much this kit costs i'll put down a link in the description and links to other bits and pieces to do with this kit but i'll give it a build see how it goes see how long it takes me and then i'll let you know any issues that i have with with the build in general Um, so I did some drilling off camera and I'll continue with building the bits and pieces. So this is currently what it looks like. The soldering required is very little. There's only a couple of components in there. Um, and I've drilled some holes and there's some insulating washers in between the metal and the PCB. There's also a hole for wires to go out of, uh, a ground one, and oh, and some holes in the lid. And these holes will help mount the the actual ignition coil on top. Um, so some stuff to drill. So make sure that you're kind of ready for that. And also it explains that when you're drilling the hole for, um, there's a transistor um, that can't be electrically connected to this, but it has to be thermally connected. And you have to be careful in how you drill that hole there, this one, because you don't want it to be, you don't want it to have sharp angles. So I've drilled it with a small drill bit and then with two slightly larger ones just to smooth it out so that it doesn't have a sharp angle because if it has a sharp angle then there could be high voltage arcs between the case and the transistor which is not what you want to happen because it could damage the transistor. So that's where I'm at so far got some holes now I just need to mount the stuff put the PCB in properly do some wiring and then some checks so it's relatively good kit I wouldn't do this as a first kit though because of the drilling required and just kind of fiddly bits and pieces uh, unless you've got someone to guide you through it for sure that they'd be fine and as long as you've got the gear ready to go but otherwise Oh, time to finish it off. I'm not a car expert, but I so I was like, how does this, how does this actually connect to, how does that electrically connect to the ignition coil? Because you got these two um, pins, I guess you could call them there, but that's for the actual ladder itself. The electrical connection is is inside these 
holes, I guess. There's some spades in there. I'll show you. So this is what it's supposed to actually look like. And you, you, the connections are in there. I've looked inside and you, there's actually like some spade connections that the these can go into. So that's where the like, actual le electrical connections are. I didn't know that. Maybe you knew that because you know how to do stuff. I didn't know it. There you go. I've got everything sorted out, pretty much. Um, the system asks or asks you to check uh, different points that are supposed to be five volts. And I've checked those. One of them had no volts on them, or they were connected to the trim pots. But you can just change the trim pots and then you test, and I found that they were okay. Something that was really cool is I'd never come across um, this kind of socket before. So I drilled the hole and then put it's just a plastic tube essentially, but it's got like a rubbery end to it. And what it does is as you screw it, I, I, I don't know, I thought this was cool. As you screw it down, it actually squeezes around the, the wires. Otherwise it should be ready to go. <laughs> Here's hoping. Um, it says don't you, I used a power supply to do some of my testing, but not to use a power supply when you're actually testing out the, um, the setup so I need to actually more firmly mechanically attach these wires to the clips um, I'll probably put like hot glue down here or something there so they're electrically connected because I just did some shoddy soldering but they won't be very firm I'm sure those can break otherwise this should be ready to go <laughs> um, Oh. I'm always nervous about this stuff, eh? Hey? You gotta do your smoke tests and it just feels very weird doing this. Three. Three, two, one. Okay, so that works. And now that you got a closer look before I start adjusting things. And I'll show you again. Well, I've got it working pretty well. So they're, they're quite close and I've bent it so that they are closer to each other than it is at the bottom. And that seems to work quite well. Yeah, so the only thing I think, you can see that it gets caught a little bit at the top here for a bit. I think it's because the top's too close to each other. But if I can just bend those away a bit more, I think that'll be fine. Awesome. You can tell that they're pretty much parallel and that seems to work the best as well. Cool. So now I can finish this off and you use bottle caps, plastic bottle caps, just to hold the ignition coil off the top of this. Not because it's not allowed to touch it, but because you have to get through and put the electrical connections onto here so there has to be a bit of space. You can't squish it, that's the only reason. I tried to check the amount of current going through. It can't be more than 10 amps because this, the fuse that you put in here um, is relatively straightforward and a lot quicker than what I was really expecting. But I'll do the finishing touches. You guys don't need to really see that, it's not that's not the fun part anyway. And yeah, 
Sweet, so that's the Jacob's Ladder Kit by JCAR. Um, the, I'll put links down below if you're wanting to buy the kit. These are New Zealand links, of course. They're in their JCAR links in Australia. Um, and I'm not sure where else you would buy these things. They'd, they'd be overseas ones as well. Oh, hey, I'm just reading the time on here. So it says two hours, and it did. It took me approximately two hours as well. The, just um, the soldering itself was only about an hour, if, if that, not, not really. It didn't take very long. So I wouldn't buy this kit if you were trying to practice soldering. But yeah, fun all around, really loud, brilliant kit to make if you wanted to demonstrate it for kids, but I wouldn't allow a, a, a child to, to put this together. The high voltage is just too dangerous. Take care of yourself, stay safe, and make good choices.